Hey, this is Michael Wilton and Todd Latore of Queensryche. And you're tuned in to The Straws Project. Strauss Project rolls on. We are at the Arcada Theater in St. Charles Club Arcada. Up it's upstairs, it's the uh, speakeasy. Okay, one more time. Yes. Sorry, you know I'm put that in the I'm, outtakes. I'm, I'm, you're, you know I'm gonna put that in the outtakes. <laughs> Strauss Project rolls on. We are at the Arcada Theater in St. Charles. We are at Club Arcada. It's on the third floor. You should come check it out. It's a speakeasy. Strauss Project rolls on. We are at the Arcata Theater in St. Charles Club Arcata on the third floor. You should come check it out. It's Todd Latore and Michael Wilton of Queensryche. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Yeah, man. Good to see you again. Good to see you. What? Let's talk about your hand because that is the uh, that is quite a break. Tell me what happened. I was working on my bike, motorcycle, and trying to break a bolt loose. The wrench came off and basically slammed the concrete as hard as you could punch the floor pretty much. So I broke the the fifth metacarpal bone, which is this bone here, right behind the knuckle. Oh. So my hand is, is what broke. And uh, I finally got that gnarly cast off two days ago. So I have a brace on right now and I have to start rehab. That's pretty much the extent of my fist that I can make. So it's a very slow healing process and it's super frustrating, but you know, yeah. Has it limited what you've been able to do on stage or anything else? Yeah, I mean, it's. I tried to, like, um, not wear the sling. And, you know, I mean, naturally, if you want to grab the mic, I've been using the mic stand more. Um, but just normal moving your arms around, I mean, I can't do that. It just, it kills. So I'm just owning it like my hand's broken. Like I said, if, if Dave Grohl can sit in a lazy boy with a broken leg, I can I can deal with a broken hand and a a cast or an arm sling um so hopefully within the next three four weeks uh, i'll have another checkup and then i have to start rehab like asap so that the uh, scar tissue doesn't build up preventing me from ever really moving these fingers again so yeah okay it's, wow it's been rough but you know i'm i'm doing uh the best that i can with to perform and not let it be a hindrance so well, and good news, from what I understand, the new album, the new Queensryche album, is finished. I mean, it's 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 still in the final mixes, and it'll be mastered by Chris Harris. Um, it's ninety nine percent. Yeah, there's there's like little ear candy yeah, stuff we're adding. Little and, little touches that always happen at the end of a project, but the bulk of it is done. I mean, the all the instruments are played, and just a, a few little uh, fixes here and there. Yeah, and things not nothing drastic or anything. So, but we're really really happy and proud of this album. It's 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 really got something special. Uh, I heard you describe it as uh, kind of unique and a little faster paced and heavier. Is, is that true? All of the above. Okay. Yeah, it's um, eclectic in a sense that all the songs you know are their own real personalities. But uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, this one turned out to have more octane on it. Okay, and then, so this is your third album with the band. Right. The first one, I heard you say that you never went back and listened to it after you guys put it out, is that true? Yeah, no, I haven't heard it since 2013. Okay, so you haven't listened to the first album, but you, but Condition... I mean, I've heard it when it was done. Condition Human, I haven't heard, I haven't listened to that album. Maybe, I listened to it like, maybe twice after it was released. And then that's that's it. So where do you put this third one in comparison to the other two? I think it's a, I think it sits in the right 
place like the evolution of the band with me in it i think this feels like a natural and it sounds like the the natural next record you know it's um it's driving there but there's still that diversity in you know some of the songs that maybe a little curveball but um yeah it's it just feels like the next logical musical uh record to yeah the chemistry of the band is is gelling you know it's it's at that point we know each other better we work together better yeah and um the whole project i mean even zeus the producer is you know he's more comfortable with the band he knows how we write you know and um so this album i think even though uh the songs came from you know scattered demos we really put something together all as a as a band and um you know i'm i'm really surprised and really you know happy with this album was it a conscious de- decision to go heavier in your writing and your playing or did it, it did it just trend that way with what you guys were experiencing it's yeah it's just you know it's the dna you know it, it was uh um i don't know i'm getting older i want it to have that energy still i, d- I don't want to you know write mellow music okay you I know think, all I, the time i think also like you know, when Whip and I, we've, we've talked about it where when you're writing songs, um, it's just each song at a time. And then when you have all of the songs that make the, the final cut, like, okay, we think these will be the ones for the record. When you're listening to them back, you're like, okay, that's mid-tempo. That one's kind of slow. Okay, that's a fast one. And we were doing the, the track placement of the last one. When we were trying to figure out what flowed good, we're like, okay, we need another fast one. And we're like, Oh, we don't. I don't think we have one. Is there another fast one? Like what, you know? And so when we came into this, the only thing I think we were a little bit more mindful of was, hey, on the last record, I remember that we remembered that we wanted some more driving tunes, and so I think only in that respect, maybe the initial songwriting from Michael or Eddie or me or Parker or whatever, um, kind of had that in implanted in our minds. Like, let's write something a little more up tempo because last time we were we were missing that and we wanted we wanted this one to to showcase a little bit more of that and, and plus so you know the does. evolution of music for Queensryche is we're live you know we're on the road all the time right and that's that consumes our life so i think a lot of that is kind of generated in these these songs you know let's let's view these okay let's you know keep the three-dimensional Queensryche artistic way of doing it but let's you know also view these as we're probably going to play these live a lot so that's that's something else we've been you know we've been very mindful of the supporters of the band like play newer stuff and we've you know we've been doing so many fly dates and this and that that you're home for two three days and then you're on a plane again and it's it's been hard to like rehearse new stuff as a band but um for the record you know we are uh, working on implementing more uh condition human songs into the set actually the 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 last two that i did and then working on some new stuff so when that's released we really want to incorporate newer material into the set list i mean it's hard because you have quite the discography and you have you know people are like oh you know we've heard the first five six albums yeah yeah but we want to hear the new stuff and although we love that at the same time there are the people that they really want to hear the classics and so finding that balance has been really hard but but we've all made the decision and uh, you know we've been working on uh kind of relearning those those things um because once we've recorded them it's you know it's not like you're together and playing all those songs that we recorded um so we're going to be doing that i think at soundcheck today we might even play with uh some condition human material to to start incorporating into the set in the very near future well like you said it's a tough balance and there's there's the people that want to hear the old stuff and then the new stuff so right. at, at what point do you guys I, I mean, how how do you decide what stays and what goes? Is it do you do you look at a popularity contest, or you say I like playing this song better, or h- mean, how do you both. decide that? Yeah, both, it's both. It's you know, which, which what do the fans want? What do we yeah, want to do too? Which song has the most views on Vimo, or you know, and which songs do the fans are always wanting to hear? And 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 uh, you know, you, you take that all into consideration, and and as well as uh, you know the 
the fans at the gigs, you know, afterwards you talk to them and they go, yeah, God, you guys, you know, you brought back memories. That was so great. And your new stuff's really cool too. You guys should play that more often, you know? So it's, it's definitely, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a percentage thing. It's, yeah. you, you don't want to, you know, offend or disappoint fans. If there's, if there's that one fan that went to the show to hear Empire or Jet City Woman or Silent Lucidity and you don't play it, it crushes them, you right. know? And uh, so there, there's certain songs that probably are always going to be played. But I think what Todd's saying is we want to bring more of the new material blended in with it. And with the new material, you guys have the Pledge Music campaign, which allows people that are diehards to contribute and get that inside information first. Yeah, and actually we're in the process of um, putting out some little teasers soon and and behind-the-scenes footage and video of some tracking things. And, um, you know, they'll be the first ones to hear new audio snippets, and then it'll go public for everyone else, um, you know. But... um, the pledge, the pledge thing has been great. We're we're going to be revealing soon some artwork, probably like a a little puzzle where each week you get another little part of the the the, the image, um, you know, and then eventually a track listing and the album title. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we're excited to start revealing. It's 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 been a long time, and uh, you know the people are certainly voicing their um, anticipation for that winter spring do we have we have an idea um the the record i think we're going to put out in february okay yeah because there were bonus tracks that were added and so we we weren't quite prepared for that when we initially set out to have a, a september october release so based on um the band and management's conversations and with the label i think february just locking in the date for that month i i feel quite confident it'll be a february release and that okay. way we can properly tour um, you know, and properly set it up. So we're probably, yeah. I think, we're probably looking at doing a video in September or October with one of the songs, and then another one, um, like in November, or December. Right. Know, just setting it up. It's kind of the mo these days. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, we're getting the the album artwork together. Um, you know, we've nailed a, a title, which I'm sorry we can't tell you yet. Um, Okay, fair enough. And I think, uh, you know, most of the songs that had work names are being, you know, penned as uh, real names now. So it's all coming together. You know, it's hopefully not too many last minute things. You know, it's, um, and uh, yeah, and and, uh, uh, this one's going to be fun to play live. Uh, I saw something where you said that you had never seen Rush. I've never seen Rush. Which leads me to ask you guys uh, some nevers, some never have I ever's. I would like to know a band that you guys never got to play with that you would like to have played with that is no longer around. Well, I mean, I'll have a different answer than Michael because, um, well, Dio. Okay. I I never saw Dio live. And um, I know that before I was in the band, Queensryche toured, I think it was the Heaven and Hell tour. And they were friends with Ronnie Dio. So... You know, for my answer would be like Ronnie James Dio. You know, um, I don't know what. Who would you? Uh... Uh, well, one of my my biggest influences, you know, growing up as a as a kid was was Jimmy Page. I never was able to go to a Led Zeppelin concert, and I would have really loved to do, done that. Um, and then just recently, you know, I realized I I never saw Tom Petty live. I didn't either. You know, and that kind of that was yeah. Certain things, you know, it's like, wow, <laughs> we're getting older, <laughs> right? You got to you got to take time out and enjoy it. Because I'd, I'd love to see Billy Joel. Um, you know what an amazing songwriter, and I don't, you know, I did see Fleetwood Mac, and so they're one of my all time favorites. Um, I never saw Heart. Um, so yeah, there's there's some staple legendary artists and bands that I didn't get to see. Um, so yeah, you know, now when they when some of these bands roll through, I, I really want to try to go see them, and you know, because you don't know when that when that right. last show is going to happen, and um, you know. And who's out there now that you guys would like to play with? Somebody that you haven't played with that you say, hey, you know what, I might like. Well, to play again, with. I have a different answer than Michael. <laughs> they toured with Iron Maiden. I've never. I met Steve Harris, 
but I've never met Bruce Dickinson, and he was a huge vocal influence. So I would love to play with Iron Maiden. I think a Queensryche, Steve Harris, if you're listening, come on, get us out. Queensryche and Iron Maiden, I think it's a, it'd be a great um, pairing. And uh, even Judas Priest, they toured with Priest. So, you know, some of those um, prior to my getting into the band, Queensryche had toured with before. Um, but for my personal bucket list stuff would be, you know, a Priest tour, a Maiden tour. Um, other than that, I mean, those are like my, my two top picks. I can't think of anything else that They're rivals that. Pretty good. Yeah. But we did tour with the Scorpions, mm -hmm. and we're doing some more touring with them later in September. So that that's that was an amazing experience and we've become friends with everyone in the band and um you know so that's that's kind of like my um, kind of the peak of what i've been able to do in queens with touring with a major a major band well you only need what 20 more years to catch those guys yeah, yeah right. right they're they're outstanding <laughs> They still deliver. Showing my age again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who would you choose? Um, gosh, I don't know. I mean, who's who's touring these days that would be fun to tour with? Journey, Def Leppard, I don't know. We've toured with uh, Def Leppard. Um, Ozzy. Toured with Ozzy. I know. Um, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> Toured with Kiss. Metallica, Megadeth. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe you guys have uh, with everybody. Maybe Pearl Jam. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, a Queensryche Pearl Jam show at Wrigley. <laughs> See, there you go. Um, I gotta ask, who's playing the drums? The drummer. Queensryche is. Animal. From the Muppets. And there you have it. Thank you so much for spending the time with us, and we always appreciate the time you spend with the Strauss it's Project. Our pleasure. Thanks so much for the uh, continued support and the interest, and uh, probably the next time we see you, we'll um, be talking about the new record. Can't wait. Yeah, new material coming out soon. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank too. you.